The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. I'm Jim Hutchinson with the New Jersey Delaware Bay edition of the Fisherman Magazine. It's Thursday, October 12th, and we're finally in the thick of the striper run along the Jersey Shore, especially in the central and north Jersey region. So no more predictions at this point. We can just go right into the details on what we see here along the coast. The big fish have certainly arrived. And even though we don't have blitz conditions along the front beaches, they are here. How long this first wave of buffalo stays in the region is all up to to the fish themselves. They do, after all, have tails. But one bellwether of sorts to this action is when my friend Chuck Manny, uh, he comes back from South Carolina every season. He travels north, uh, just as the stripers are coming from the north themselves, traveling east and south. But aboard his Thai man out of the highlands this week, I know he was well stocked with those eels under the planers, but clearly evidenced in a trip with the, ba the Wakefield boys earlier this week, somewhere off of Sandy Hook with bass to 35 pounds. And yeah, there were multiple hookups on that trip, so it's not just one and done. The stripers are there, and that's along the northern stretch of Monmouth County out of Shark River. So Ricky Donofrio is back to his pre-workday haunts, the striper trolling out of Shark River. He had Diener with him uh, earlier this week uh, for a nice assortment of some big bass as well. Sticking there in Monmouth County, in that particular area, 14-year-old Dom Salvatore in the blue sweatshirt and 12-year-old Luke Sperduto in the red hair there. Yeah, this is what happens with your red hair later on. Don't worry about that for now, Luke. But uh, they got into the action, had a few stripers on the troll with long shot charters as well in the past several days. I know surf casters will always tell you that boat fish, well, they don't count. So then get in on it. Get in on it now, like this Dom, Dominic Tallarico. He's on the beach in Island Beach on Sunday, plugging stripers up to 42 inches. So yes, Sunday was the one year anniversary of that Buffalo invasion that we had in October 2022. 20, uh, so we've been talking about when the winds would turn west after that nor'east blow, and hopefully by the time of the anniversary, things would catch fire. Uh, it does appear the striped bass action is definitely underway here at the Jersey Shore. And again, central and north Jersey. I received an email Wednesday from Dave Adamchick, who was out um, uh, Wednesday morning westerlies, bait in tight to the beach, he said, caught and released this beautiful 38-inch striper at Sandy Hook. And as Dave said, things are about to heat up. I do think you're right. Meanwhile, we head back down into Ocean County, just north of Barnegat Inlet. I got this text from my coworker, Jenny Ackerman, on Tuesday. She didn't send me a text before she went, just afterwards. She was tossing one of her own homemade bucktails into the surf. Uh, it was so warm out, she didn't even put the waders on. So that's what we have this time of year. Beautiful week weather-wise. And again, water temperatures are still warm, but that bait is arriving. And of course, it's also flowing out of our inlets as well. So by beach or by boat, if you've been waiting for the first solid reports to begin your striper quests, there you have it. The stripers are here. The fall run at the Jersey Shore is officially underway. Of course, you know it's underway. Keep playing with my hat. My brand new hat don't have it fit just right. The LBI Surf Fishing Classic kicked off on Saturday. Nine weeks, starts October 7th, runs all the way through October 10th. And I'm here at Surf City Bait and Tackle, one of the three participating registration shops and also one of the three way stations for that nine week tournament. This is a great place. Uh, some, some back history that I'm not sure if you know about. 1945, this was first uh, a tackle shop. Around that time, it was right after World War II, Carl Coaster, nicknamed Sandy, he opened this shop as Sandy's. So it's definitely one of the longest running, continuous oper continuously operating tackle shops, certainly here on LBI, maybe along the entire coast. Uh, uh, George Cook took it over from Sandy after that. Bruce and Pat Hoagland used to sell bait here until they finally bought the shop, turned it into Bruce and Pat sometime, uh, sometime after that. When Bruce and Pat retired, the Santa Guida family took it over in the late 90s, and it's been a family business ever since. Now this was one of my favorite local shops for a long period of time with Bruce and Pat, Pat Hoagland, uh, who I'm still in touch with all the time. She helped me get some of my first stripers. Well, Tommy Santaguida and his son Tom have taken it over from Sue 
Tommy's sister, Sue, retired, moved down to North Carolina. But if you haven't been here in a while, you got to stop and check it out. Uh, Tom and his son have done an extraordinary job with setting up uh, for the 2023 season. They'll be here for many years to come. But certainly stop by here. If you've never been to Surf City Bait and Tackle, stop by and say hello. Register for the LBI Surf Fishing Classic. If you're fishing even one day, $20,000 of prizes. There are daily, weekly segment awards, grand prize awards, blackfish, uh, redfish, kingfish, striped bass, and bluefish, of course, going on. Uh, get your commemorative hat while supplies last. Now, the folks here at Surf City have already registered the top slot striper of the Classic this week. Uh, thus far, it's a 10.94 pounder for Steve Taylor. Caught that on mullet over the weekend. By the time you see this, it could already be supplanted by another striper. Let's hope. Uh, the top black, well, not for Steve. He doesn't hope that. Top blackfish in the Classic was also registered here at Surf City. Uh, Barney, it's Matt Merlin this week, 4.8 pounder. So I would tell you that that South Jetty at Barnegat Inlet uh, is a great place to do some togging. Whether you've got the green crabs or the sand crabs, the togging is underway throughout New Jersey. It continues. A lot of se sedge bank uh, tog at this point and a lot of jetty blackfish wherever you go. We head south of here, south of LBI, to the Mullica River, Great Bay, Absecon Bay, Little Bay, if you know those waters, the, uh, the, the cuts and sloughs that lead through those flats. Well, we hear the striper action is getting pretty good at this point, especially with water temperatures dropping and bait active throughout the bays in New Jersey. But in that particular area, Captain Dave from Absecon Bay, he had K out earlier this week for a beautiful sunrise and a gorgeous 29-inch striped bass. Just across the way from there, Captain Andy at Riptide Bait and Tackle in Brigantine. He said Anthony P was first to weigh in a striped bass for the for the Riptide Derby. Uh, that happened on Tuesday. 28 and a quarter inches, seven and a half pounds. He caught that at the Brigantine Jetty on a jig head and rubber shad. As we move down into Cape May County, that's where we're looking, uh, where all folks are looking for these migratory fish, right? It does seem that those first buffalo come in from the northeast they hit the stretches of central and uh, north jersey that's where the action was frenetic october especially november last year folks along the cape may county stretch and atlanta county hope to see some of those migratory run striped bass but the bays have come alive with action back there so really good opportunity to throw some of those plugs i'm standing here with a beautiful plug selection here one of my favorites the new title ipro uh, from from Tsunami, uh, a terrific bunker imitation along the sod banks. We have plenty of peanut bunkers still stacked up in the back. So if you want to take your opportunities, get out along those sedges to score. And again, I talk about tog all over those jetties, but sheep's head as well. They're still around. Uh, at least they were as of Saturday. That's when Ryan Sullock South Jersey yak fishing had a dinner size sheep's head somewhere in Cape May County along the rocks. He was fishing with a bottom sweeper jig with a sand flea. It may be fall, it may be, but this is also a good time to where we see some returning black drum into the back bays. Uh, folks that set out chum pots to go for some of those blowfish uh, and some of the pan fish with the kids often get the puppy drum, but those sheep's head are still around. Other summer visitors, of course, include the Pelagics and the Mahi offshore. Yes, Mahi last week out of Lewis Harbor Marina in Delaware. Justin Reed and the boys loaded up. Uh, on the Baltimore Canyon, got the mahi out there, first after loading up at Lewis Harbor on Ronzi Lures, Butterfish, and Sardines. We did have some reports this week in our uh, regular weekly reports at thefisherman.com of yellowfin now set up at the triple wrecks. It was a little late this year, but those tight windows, if you can get out there to find your way to the east to where the tuna are, you might have a good opportunity. When I look at the midweek forecast from NOAA Marine Weather, it looks good for the rest of the week and through Saturday. Sunday, it starts to get dicey again, but you have some opportunities in the next couple of days. Just keep an eye on that no weather uh, forecast. Speaking of which, feet still sandy from her stretch of striper fishing along the central Ocean County beaches. Jenny Ackerman is open boat this week with Captain Taco aboard Jersey Nuts Sport Fishing for a look at that fall tuna action here at the Jersey Shore. Hey guys, welcome to this week's open boat. Today we're here on the 45 foot Jersey Nuts boat with Captain Matt, AKA Captain Taco. How we doing? And Captain Taco has been having, and the whole Jersey Nuts fleet has been having an absolute banger week of tuna fishing. And I had a couple questions about like the fall transition into a tuna bite. So 
what is that like what's the big switch from summer tuna fishing to fall tuna fishing well usually around september 1st we uh switch over to chunking tunas whereas mainly before that we troll for tunas so when we're chunking for tunas we get to use a lot lighter gear it's a lot more fun for the anglers and everything um, we get to do a lot more jigging when we're chunking. A lot of people like their tuna jigging. So when we're chunking, you always have the availability to tuna jig on board, um, which is a lot of fun. Hooking tunas on, you know, 48 ounce lead jigs um, versus trolling. You know, trolling, we get into some really good troll bites throughout the summer there, but chunking's always a fan favorite for everyone. And it's a lot more fun fishing wise, lighter tackle, um, you know, drag screaming. Big like fish that. too, right? Big fish. You got a tag tuna last week, a $500 GPS reward tag tuna. I'm sure that made your customers real happy. Yep, same size fish, uh, you know, 30 to 60, 70 pound yellow fins on average. Uh, had fish up to 100 pounds last week, blue fins. Um, it's cool to see on the chunk. You know, it's a fun, fun season out there in the fall. A lot of boats and uh, you know, a lot of boats out there that, uh, and everybody throwing chunks honestly kind of helps the bite, in my opinion, at least this year. It seems like the more boats around, the more fish there seems to be biting. So, so we've got some decent weather windows coming up. So definitely consider booking with the Jersey Nuts fleet. You can book with Captain Taco on 45. You could book with the other boat here at Southside Marina. You can go down to Atlantic City. They got three boats. Yep, you can jump up. We, our website uh, is jerseynutsportfishing.com. You jump on there. That's got all the info between all the boats. All the boats are chunking right now. Uh, probably hopefully do this right up until November there. So Definitely take advantage of this tuna bite, guys. Catch you next week. Of course, the offshore grounds, you do still have some opportunities. And as they said, aboard Jersey Nuts, you still have that opportunity through November. But it's, uh, again, we're at that, that transition time of the year. There are still plenty of opportunities. Just talked to a couple of guys here at Surf City Bait and Tackle. They're looking to get out for some of those kingfish, which is one of the registration fish in the LBI Surf Fishing Classic. Of course, we are now back in black sea bass at the Jersey Shore. As of this past Sunday, the head boats are on the hunt for those biscuits. And after a brutal couple of weeks, 10 days especially, with a lot of these boats tied up at the dock uh, due to the foul weather, it's nice to see our Jersey Shore ports alive again with folks lining up to get out along the rails. Now, in addition to sea bass on those trips, there are other critters you'll find on the wrecks, reefs, and snags this time of year. I talked to Captain Steve Spinelli aboard the Skylarker uh, out of Belmar earlier this week. Here he is with uh, Wayne Mancini from Wall. They found some nice blowfish about a dozen of them, and they were a few miles outside of Manasquan, so that's pretty cool. Of course, we still have the triggers. Uh, Emmett, uh, here at the shop at Surf City, brought in a couple of triggers uh, to, to skin out. So the trigger fish are still in the mix. You also have some hubcap porgies being hauled up across the rails, especially as you get into the northern part of the state. Uh, this one aboard the Jamaica 2 this week. So a combo trip with sea bass on the hit list with some of those porgies and whatever else is hanging out by the, uh, by the wrecks and reefs at this point. I remember, I think it was last year, about this time of year, might have been a little bit earlier, where the guys working some of the reef structure off of Cape May County also found some big black drum in the mix as well. Just remember, folks, subscribers to the Fisherman Magazine, those humpbacks, those humpback sea bass, and those big porgy, they qualify you in the Dream Boat Fishing Challenge your competition leads off or continues on through November, the hunt for a uh, brand new Steiger, Yamaha uh, outboard engine, the whole Minn Kota package, but just being on the board, bringing in one of those big biscuits, uh, one of those big knothead sea bass could get you a good score. Let's check in on that Dreamboat leaderboard, see who's standing where and at the top with Tim Smith. 
We had two new entries that made the Dream Boat leaderboard this week. The first was a 2.25 pound porgy caught by Darren Tremel of Brick, New Jersey. This was good enough for the 10th spot in the category. Next was a first place 4.28 pound black sea bass landed by Andre Ledeau of Beckett, Massachusetts. The top three remain unchanged. We have Kyle Kraus holding third place with 15 points, Eddie Terrabile hanging tough in second place with 18 points, and Bobby Cifarelli leading the world with a comfortable 24 points. The Dream Boat Fishing Challenge is the fisherman subscriber only multi species fishing competition with a chance to win a 21 foot Steigercraft center console powered by Yamaha, along with many other great prizes. Visit thefisherman.com to subscribe and get all the details so you can be part of the action. A thresher shark at the wall of the Manasquan and a look at some of the upcoming actions and events along the Jersey Shore. But first, let's head west, check in for our Pocono Outdoors report and our freshwater scene with my good friend George Shower. Well, hey, thanks, Jim. You know, the weather's playing a huge role in the fishing over these last few days and even in the coming week. You know, we had that a huge uh, cold front come in this week, but uh, Sunday we had big wind. We had rain on Saturday. Conditions are just horrible for those guys wanting to get out and fish. Uh, this cold front coming through right now is really putting lockjaw on the fish, and we're seeing some guys out there trying but not being very successful, but a few fish being caught. Uh, a couple guys did check in. Chuck Groski was out on uh, Beltsville. He said he was out there trying for some striper. No luck there, just too windy. Uh, he ended up calling it quits. Even my good friend Josh Taylor, he always gets on fish. Um, he was out there on, as well, trying to work that wind, and he only managed to get one 16-inch smallmouth on the boat, so conditions were definitely tough. Uh, Thomas Lawrence was up on the Delaware River. He was having a little bit better luck, uh, with some of these smallmouth. Uh, he was using some top water, uh, a little bit of popper, and he was getting smallmouth up to three pounds, which is not too bad for these conditions. Uh, he even had a muskie come up, take his popper, cut the line. I'm not sure what's worse, missing, missing a big old muskie or losing your favorite popper that's working for you. But in any case, he did have some good action that day. Great luck to you there, Thomas. Also, Jen Wong over there in New Jersey, he's out there playing with those uh, big old pickerel. I mean, them things are as big as pike uh, you know they're they're aggressive they're gonna bite no matter what the, uh, the conditions are so good luck to you Jen great fishing there guys I hope you have better luck this week coming weekend don't put the rain gear away I think we're in for another rainy weekend so we'll see how conditions turn out but if you get out and get on don't forget to send us those pics as well okay from Pennsylvania I'm George your Pocono Outdoors guy from the Pocono Mountains, the Pacific coast of Costa Rica, let's check in with Captain Ben Gilmore, Jackpot Sport Fishing out of Marina Pez Vela. Hey there guys, good afternoon, and this is Ben Gilmore from down here in Costa Rica. This week's fishing report, I'm bringing you from the Caribbean coast of Costa Rica. Now down here, it's peak tarpon season right now, September and October, the peak months of the year. Lots and lots of big tarpon with fish over 150 pounds possible down here. It's a mecca for fly fishermen in the southern coast of Costa Rica and the northern coast as well. Some beautiful river mouths, mangroves, and we fish um, in the breakers next to the ocean. So some of you guys probably didn't know about our tarpon fishery, but check it out, guys. Over on the Pacific coast right now, Marina Pez Vela, it's peak Dorado season. We got tons and tons of Dorados. Boats this week have been catching 15, 20 Dorados per day. Some most fish 15 to 20 pounds, but some big guys in there, 40, 50 pounders as well. There's been striped marlin, blue marlin, sailfish, and yellowfin tuna. Check us out, guys. This is Ben Gilmore from the Marina Pez Vela and Jackpot Sport Fishing. Back to you. This Saturday, October 14th, right here in Surf City, the Merchantville Fishing Club is hosting their sixth annual surf fishing tournament. Headquarters for registration is just up the road a little bit at the, at the firehouse. Um, it's an ASAC tournament, the Association of Surf Angling Clubs, open to teams and individuals. You don't have to be an ASAC member. Come on down to the registration. If you want details on this LBI-based tournament this weekend, call Gene Aikens this week. 609-440-6994. Find details on all the ASAC events, all the tournaments in New Jersey, everything you need to know coming up throughout the month of October. It's in the October edition of the Fisherman Magazine. You'll find it at places like, uh, like Surf City Bait and Tackle. All the local tackle shops have them. You'll find them in your local newsstand and at your local Wawa. Subscribe 
And you also get the digital weekly edition every Monday with additional how-to, where-to information, product news, news and events. Uh, it's only $29.95 for the year. You get it all. And again, you're automatically entry, uh, entered into the Fisherman Magazine's Dreamboat Fishing Challenge. At that point, you just have to catch a jumbo fish, bring it into Surf City Bait and Tackle, and weigh it in. Some of it, of course, in the magazine, maybe you don't want. Uh, some of my editorials, for example. Well, we've got another one. Here's an update from the industrial offshore wind developers at Orsted this week, and their work at Island Beach, as well as in Ocean City, is finally coming into mainstream media focus. You can see some of the headlines now. Uh, they will begin some cable drilling at the park at Island Beach sometime this, this month, and they say access issues will be limited. But finally, we're starting to see more of that Orsted work. Apparently, it's gonna go down at some point, maybe to a single line, but they've said, uh, or a single lane uh, for that beach road that runs through Island Beach State Park but hopefully no other access problems. Now for mariners, a couple of new buoys to keep an eye out for. The Orsted developers have one research marker to be set sometime this month near the BB buoy on the Barnegat Bay. And that's where the cable is gonna run two and a half miles uh, south from the, from the swimming area where it makes access there into Lacey, uh, some place right above Oyster Creek on some private land. Uh, and again, that's being deployed by Orsted. There's another piece of equipment being deployed by Orsted just east of Island Beach State Park as well. So be on the lookout for those, uh, those markers. They're gonna be brand new, but if you have questions, that's what that's for. And all, uh, all seriousness aside, what I found most profound about the alert to mariners this week issued by Orsted. Uh, they don't know or perhaps don't even care uh, about the differences between New York and New Jersey. Island Beach State Park is not in New York. Island Beach is in New Jersey. So somebody get those Danes a geography book. They need some help. Happy 13th birthday this week to my friend Pedro Ildefonso. You're a teenager now, brother. No free passes. Now you have to share your spots and your secrets with us old folks. That's the rules. Surfcasters rules. Just made it up. Sad news to report this week. My good friend Captain Barry Gibson from Maine passed away after a long, hard fight with cancer. Uh, he personally meant a lot to me on a professional basis, uh, was one of my many mentors and guides over the years. Uh, if you remember the heyday of Saltwater Sportsman, way back when Saltwater Sportsman was more of a Northeast publication, still a great publication nationally, but Barry was one of the uh, premier editors for a long time, was never afraid to take a stance, uh, always battled on behalf of recreational fishermen. Uh, he guided me, he helped me, he told me when I was wrong and helped me when I was right at, uh, at the same time. So God bless you cap fair winds and thank you for all you did for the recreational fishermen and especially for me finally this week if you wondered about the presence of bunker well yeah it's there it, it's on out beyond the three mile line uh, when we see the west winds the offshore winds those bunker nose up against the wind they're going to push up closer to the beach and of course we're getting all those uh, those those peanut bunker and some of those cupcakes now moving out the inlets as well. So yeah, the bunker are there, and this is a good indication that they are. Frank from Gabriel Tackle sent this video clip to me uh, this week. It was from the Manasquan Inlet Wall. William Kennan was doing a little fishing the other day on the Point Pleasant side, generated quite a little crowd there as he successfully battled a thresher shark up to the wall. That's right, surf casting for threshers. Unbelievably, he got his rig free as the whip tail swam free unscathed. Threshers in the inlet means bunker in the inlet. All good signs for the fall run. It is underway. If you're waiting for reports, I don't know why. Uh, Grumpy Hansen always said it. Don't just watch the reports or don't just read the reports, make them. And again, if you're coming down to LBI anytime this fall, sign up for the LBI Fishing Classic, more than $20,000 in cash and prizes, awarded daily, weekly segment, kingfish, redfish, blackfish, striped bass, and bluefish, all in the mix. Get more details at LBI SFC, SFC or stop by Fish Heads, Jingles, or right here at Surf City Bait and Tackle. Catch them up. I will see you on the beach.